There's more bad news for the Tories this week. They've lost what was once one of their core demographics, 78-year-old classic crooners. One of them called in as a surprise guest when Sky News hosted a phone-in on the NHS. What are your thoughts on what the government should be doing about NHS workers who want decent pay and they want conditions, they want to save the NHS in their words? Absolutely. They're not asking for a great deal. Um, I personally have been a Tory for a long time. I think this government should stand down now and give the Labour Party a go at it because this is heartbreaking for the nurses. It really is heartbreaking. In all my years of living in this country, I've never seen it so bad. Mm. And anything I can do to help. Go on, the nurses. I'm on your side. (laughs) Um, I'm sure you have family members who have used the NHS as well. Like you said, there are... um, people like yourself lucky enough to be able to afford private care and that's something that more and more people are exploring whether they're wealthy middle income earners or just scraping the money together to help themselves or family members how is it how important is it that we have a health service a national health service that is free at the point of entry from the cradle to the grave if you like how important is it that the nhs stays as it is and isn't privatized or is that somewhere some way of saving it privatizing it in part well maybe there's somewhere down the middle you know if we're going to privatize it it it, it could become terribly expensive um uh, as for my family my immediate family and all my kids I'm lucky enough to send them to to, to private service, but uh, I don't know. This is this is a bad time for us in Great Britain. It really is. Change the bloody government. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, Sir Roger, you're so, making your political political points very clear here on Sky News. Do you have to point out, obviously, that people do have other views, and you know we have had callers on here saying give Rishi Sunak a chance. They promised to sort out um, the national health service and other issues facing the company uh, country, but of course, you know um, the government have been around for over a decade now, which is the counterpoint to this argument. Rod Stewart isn't the only veteran pop superstar to have lashed out at our Tory government this week. Mick Hucknall from Simply Red has also got involved. He tweeted this, For me, it's personal. When I was six years old, the NHS saved my life. The lying Tories want to privatise to profit their shareholder supporters. Don't let them get away with it. Hashtag support the strikes. Love M. So Mick Hucknall. It is important to say, unlike Rod Stewart, Mick Hucknall isn't a lifelong Tory, and he was actually a donor to Labour under Tony Blair, but he's no lefty. In 2015, he praised the electorate for rejecting Marxist Labour. Remember, that was under Ed Miliband. And he went on to proactively campaign against Corbyn. Um, This is a Sun headline from the time. Simply blue, lifelong Labour voter Mick Hucknall says he can't support the party because of Jeremy Corbyn. The Simply Red singer warned that Corbyn cannot be trusted as Prime Minister. Now, I love this headline because this is a classic of the Corbyn era. Lifelong Labour voter can't vote Labour because of Jeremy Corbyn. We just showed you um, him saying in 2015 that he thought the electorate were right to reject Marxist Ed Miliband. So that doesn't make him sound like a lifelong Labour voter to me. In any case, um, he has definitely changed his tune. He is He's very radical now, Mick Hucknell. This awful, awful Conservative tenure has been disastrous for the UK. This cannot stand. If they won't resign and call a general election, then an all-out general strike seems the only option. Brexit Britain is on its knees. Hashtag pound sterling. Aaron, should the Tories be worried that they've lost the boomer crooner vote? The boomer crooner vote. It's not important. It's not remotely important, Michael, because I think most people are going to vote Labour or Tory on the basis of their rent, their mortgage, of their take-home pay with regards to inflation or public services. And you can look at the polls. You know, it's not one or two polls that have the Tories 20, 30 points behind. I mean, there's one poll I'd say, Michael, that would see the Tories on 49 seats. The SNP would be the official opposition. That is not because of celebrities saying they won't vote for the Tories, right? That's because the big macroeconomic and political fundamentals coming apart at the seams, where people have to wait several hours for an ambulance, where people see that they're having to pay a £1,000 more for their mortgage this year than they would have said two years ago. Childcare, you know, issue after issue after issue after issue. The Tories just can't solve anything. They can't do anything. They can't execute on anything. That's why people won't vote for them. So I don't think it's important, but it is significant because people like Rod Stewart, people like Mick Hucknall, they're celebrities. They want to be loved. That's literally the only currency they care about, Michael. You know, I was supporting Jeremy Corbyn and Labour because I thought the policies were right, even when it was deeply unpopular. 
because I don't do this to be popular. I don't do this to be, you know, get social cachet and be able to talk to the right people and be Mr. Goody Two Shoes in the public eye. No, I do it because I think this country needs a fundamental rehaul when it comes to its democracy, public services. I think working people need to be put first because they've been second for far too long. And the 1% have been running away with things, whether it's media ownership, whether it's wealth inequality, whether it's effectively what seems to be with the, this conservative government, impunity from the rule of law. We need to rectify that. And that was clear to me between 2015 and 2019 the only way to do that was through a transformational Labour government. And my suspicion is, Michael, any kind of transformational Labour government which actually offers meaningful real change, which will therefore meet a significant amount of resistance from the establishment in this country, would be admonished, attacked and castigated by the likes of Mick Hucknall. Why? Because they want to be Mr. Popular, Mr. Nice. Everybody has to like you. You want to be able to go to all the dinner parties and not get any earache about who you're voting for. Why do you support this politician who wants a wealth tax or who might make our houses you know, not go up in value every single year? Heaven forbid, in central London zone one. So it's significant, but my God, Michael, some contrition from these people would be welcome. Because at every turn since 2010, it's been clear this is the route the Conservatives are taking the country down. This hasn't happened by accident. We've had consecutive Conservative governments since 2010 under-investing in public services, freezing the wages of people, for instance, working in the National Health Service, underfunding schools, tripling tuition fees, not building the infrastructure. Uh, where they have had a housing policy, as with uh, help, help to buy in 2013-14, they did that precisely to push the price of houses up. Uh, the same with the freeze on stamp duty during the COVID crisis. So the Tories have been consistent about who they are and what they stand for. I only wish Mick Hucklon could be the same. Obviously, I supported Jeremy Corbyn in 2017 and 2019. I think the country would be a much better place if he got elected. But I do think it is especially telling when someone who calls himself a lifelong Labour voter found even Ed Miliband too left-wing. Because the thing with, with Jeremy Corbyn, obviously he came with a lot of baggage. Now, a lot of that baggage I liked. You know, it, you weren't just voting for someone who was anti-austerity. You were also voting for someone who was pro-Palestine. You were voting for someone with very strong opinions when it comes to foreign policy. Now, I think he, he tended to be correct on those positions. But I can see how it's consistent that you could say, oh, I don't like what the Tories have done to the NHS, but I also don't like Jeremy Corbyn's position on XYZ. With Ed Miliband, you were literally being offered basically the same government, but one that funded the NHS a bit better and had a mansion tax. And even that was too much for Mick Hucknall. So if now you're looking at the NHS and saying, oh, isn't it terrible what they've done to it? And even Ed Miliband was too left wing for you? Even the mere threat of having a minor little tax on your mansion was enough that you said, oh, let's take a punt with five more years of David Cameron. Then it is very difficult to have any sympathy for you, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm.